Hello everyone, all who are in one body of Christ, your Savior welcomes to this joy that is given us together. Today I'm meditating upon the true restoration of our soul. Before we start, let's see what Scripture talks about on this topic. Psalm chapter 23, verse 3. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now to be a from the verse you just read. Why does God lead and take care of us? Why is he so interested in our goodness? Why does he lead us to the path of righteousness? Is it God's goodness? Does God want to show off his goodness? The question of whether God loves us personally and individually is common. Surrounded by our knowledge of love is limited to conditional love of finite humanity. We cannot easily comprehend that God would love us. We know our faults. We also know that in this contrast God is perfect and sinless. Then why would God, who is infinite and holy, want to love the finite and sinful? The great truth of the gospel is that he does. Time and time again, Scripture reminds us of God's love for us. The first and foremost reason that justifies His love is that He created us in His own image, and He did so with great care and concern. He formed us from the dust of the ground and breathed in us His breath of life to make us a living being. Many verses demonstrate God's love. We can see His tenderness in the Old and New Testament alike. David and the other psalmists were particularly articulate regarding God's love. Just look at Psalm 139. The Song of Solomon is just another great picture of love. God's love is even evident in the history of the Israelites as he continually persevered a remnant and pled with his people to obey and live. God is seen as just but also merciful. He is tender. He is jealous for his people, desires that the relationship be restored. Perhaps the greatest picture of God's love is Jesus' passion and crucifixion. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 8, Jesus' work on the cross was a clear, unmistakable declaration of love, and this love is unconditional. We were in our worst state when Christ died for us. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. But because of his great love for us, God, who was rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. This salvation has made true life possible. God is not stingy. He wants to lavish his love on us. Paul confirms and proclaims the victory of all true believers in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 2. One of his greatest articulations of God's love is this. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave up for us all, how will he also not go along with him graciously give us all things who shall separate us from the love of christ shall trouble our hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god that is christ jesus our lord so the simple answer is yes yes god loves you god loves me as hard as it may be to believe it is the truth And out of this selfless love, he restores our soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. His name's sake is not selfish. Instead, it is selfless towards us so we can be with him forever and ever. When his strength comes in us, nothing can prevent us from our victory over unrighteousness. Have courage, believe in him, let him lead us to the path of righteousness to be restored and enjoy all that he has planned for us. This message also gives a promise today. today. The promise is, The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Let's close this time of prayer together. Please join me in this prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, mighty, wonderful God, Father of all grace and mercy, I praise your name for your wonderful words of comfort and your promise that nothing can ever pluck me out of your hand. Thank you that no matter what I do, you will restore me and lead me along life's path for the honor of your name. Keep me, I pray, from wandering from you 
And may all I do from this day forward be to honor and glorify you. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Have a blessed day, wonderful gods, and we talk to you tomorrow.